Um, now, the conjugation of the present active indicative of any verb in the vocabulary words that you have can be derived by substituting the stem uh, and then adding the endings. The endings uh, will remain constant. The endings of each verb stem. When you want to conjugate the verb stem, the endings will be the same with each verb stem. So whether you conjugate the word blepo, or gnosko, or grotho, or luo, or didosko, you just take the stem and you put it with the endings. And the endings will help you learn uh, the, uh, the number, help you learn the person, and uh, help you learn uh, uh, every, about everything you need to know about the, uh, about the verb itself. Now, um, the primary endings are personal endings, which, um, which we call the primary tenses, are these endings right here. Uh, the first one is O. Um, well, I should write these down. Uh, we went over them last week. You have O, so you have Luo. And Luo is what? I loose. So O is always I. I, and if you take the word blepo, the ending would be the same. It would be what? I see. It's always the same. I see. Uh, you take gnosko, uh, the uh, first person singular would be O, and it would be I know. And so then you have uh, uh, ace, and the ace, uh, if you say uh, Lou Ace, what is Lou Ace? You lose. You lose. Uh, or you are losing. And then you have uh, A, Epsilon Iota, and this is what? He, third person singular. So you have uh, first person uh, singular, second person singular, and third person singular. Always the same. Yeah. I've got it right there behind me. Thank you very much. All right. First person singular, second person singular, third person singular. And then you've got the first person plural, second person plural, and third person plural. <coughs> and any? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Sorry, that second person plural, is, like, is that like we would say y'all? That kind of thing? Is it like... You, it, but a group of people, you. They would, yes. <laughs> they would never say y'all. Well, no, 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 no,
and the point from point A to point B, he's looking at something as it happens. He sees it. A holistic. That those and the verbs are the tenses are the aorist tense. Uh, I mean progressive, the imperfect tense, and the present tense. Now, the other way is, is holistic. And by holistic we mean that they see they look at something and they see it as a whole. The best way I can think of that is to say, I went to the store. That's seen something in the past as a whole. And so you have uh, the holistic and the progressive. Um, in the progressive, you have the past uh, progressive, which is imperfect, and you have the non-past progressive, which is present. The Greeks didn't say past, present, future. They looked at something as being past and non-past. Being past and non past. Now, sometimes or oftentimes, between the stem and these personal endings down here, um, they would place a, a, a vowel. It's called, uh, uh, some people call it the variable vowel, uh, some people call it the connecting vowel. Um, they would add a vowel before, before the suffixes, before these suffixes primarily, men and te. And um, this connecting vowel functioned really as a, a um, phonological cushion between the verb stem and the suffix. Uh, the connecting vowel is omicron before a uh, mu and nu and epsilon before all the other letters. So it would always be omicron before mu and it would be epsilon before te. And uh, this vowel was added solely for the sake of pronunciation. It does not affect the meaning of the word at all. It was only to make the pronunciation a little bit uh, more pleasant. Um, and so that's why you have a word like um, uh, luo. We say luo, luace, lue. Then we say um, luomen, luete, luci. Not lucy, like in. Lucy Ball, but Lucy. Luoman, Luete, Lucy.